Hello again everyone and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, we're going to take a look at CrowdSec. Now CrowdSec has been featured on this channel in the past, but it's time to take another look. There's a new plugin available, this time for PFSense. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you the new plugin and I'll also show you the updated installation procedure as well. And I'm really excited about this one because I use PFSense, but not only that, I know many of you do as well. I have a big home lab following within my audience and PFSense and CrowdSec are both very prominent within the home lab space. And now we could put the two together so that way our PFSense firewall could benefit from the same protection that we benefit from with our Linux servers. Before we get started though, I just wanted to mention this video is being sponsored by CrowdSec. However, it's not a review. I've already reviewed CrowdSec sometime in the past. This video in particular is specifically going to cover the PFSense plugin that we'll be looking at shortly. And I can't wait to get started, but first of all, what exactly is CrowdSec? If you haven't heard of CrowdSec before, let's talk a little bit about what it actually is in the first place. If you haven't seen my previous videos regarding CrowdSec, you might be wondering what exactly it is. CrowdSec, a combination of the words crowd and security, helps to protect your Linux infrastructure from threat actors. To be fair, no security solution can make your servers 100% hack-proof, but the threat intelligence that powers CrowdSec is hard to not take advantage of. Basically, the way that CrowdSec works is that you have two primary components, the security engine itself, and also one or more remediation components that you can also install. Both of these components serve very important functions and the two together make up CrowdSec. CrowdSec's security engine monitors your server for malicious activity. If it detects something isn't quite right, such as someone trying to use SSH to log into your server over and over again, it logs that malicious activity in its database. You could think of CrowdSec security engine as a watcher that's keeping an eye on things, but it doesn't take any action itself. Remediation components, on the other hand, do take action. The action that's performed depends on the remediation component that you're using. For example, if you install CrowdSec's firewall bouncer, that component will create firewall rules to block IP addresses that are detected by the security engine. So basically, the security engine keeps a watchful eye and remediation components turn that intelligence into actions to help protect your server. What really sets CrowdSec apart from other solutions, though, is its claim to fame, crowdsourced threat intelligence. If a threat actor attempts to gain access to a server that has CrowdSec installed, then that information is sent to CrowdSec and other servers out there in the wild that also have CrowdSec installed will have that IP address added to their database. So basically, if a threat actor attempts to break into a server with CrowdSec installed, it warns all CrowdSec installations about that IP. And this is where the crowd portion of its name comes from. CrowdSec also has a dashboard available, the CrowdSec console. With the console, you can see all of your servers that have CrowdSec installed all in one place. You could also use the console to manage any decisions that are made based on anything the security engine might detect. You could add additional block lists, plugins, and more. Now there's other remediation components that you can install to perform various actions, but the firewall example is a very common configuration. And speaking of remediation components, that brings us full circle to what's new this time around. Recently, CrowdSec has released a plugin that allows it to work with PFSense, a popular BSD-based operating system that serves as a firewall appliance. PFSense is a powerful platform in and of itself, able to handle complex networking tasks and gives you access to advanced networking functions. And that's one of many reasons why it's so darn popular. Ever since I first heard of CrowdSec, I was hoping that they'd create a plugin for PFSense. I mean, just think about it. CrowdSec can help protect your Linux infrastructure from threat actors, so why can't it do the same thing with PFSense? Well, it can, and with CrowdSec's latest feature, it does exactly that. By installing CrowdSec's PFSense plugin, you're adding a powerful remediation component to PFSense itself. This way, if a threat actor is attempting to break into your network, then you could benefit from CrowdSec's threat intelligence with your Edge firewall the same way you do when you install it on Linux. Once you have the plugin installed, it'll create a CrowdSec section right there in the menu, and you can use that to access and configure its settings to your liking. And just like with your Linux servers, the plugin will make your PFSense firewall visible within your CrowdSec console along with your other servers. Best of all, since PFSense is a networking appliance, by installing CrowdSec on it, then nodes behind your firewall will also benefit from additional protection. So let's take a look at the updated installation procedure for CrowdSec. What I'll do in this section is show you the standard procedure on Linux. We'll protect a Linux server with CrowdSec in this section, 
And then in the next section, I'll show you the process of setting it up on PFSense. Now, the first thing we're going to do is go to crowdsec.net in our browser, and then we'll click Login. And this will bring you to the login page. And if you don't have an account, you could click Sign Up for Free. If you do have one, obviously you could sign in. I'll go ahead and create an account right now so you can see what the process looks like. So you'll type in your email address. And we'll come up with a super secret password. We'll check this box right here to accept the agreement. And then we'll sign up. And at this point, we should have a brand new account, but we will need to activate the account, which I'll do off camera. Once you activate your account, you'll go back to the login page here. So we'll click sign in. And then we'll sign into our account. Anyway, once you're logged in, you should see a screen similar to this one. At this point, since it's a brand new account, I don't have any machines at all here. So what you'll need to do to set up CrowdSec is finish step one and step two. And the process is pretty straightforward. The first thing you'll do is choose a security engine. Basically just choose a version of CrowdSec that matches your operating system. That's really all there is to it. In my case, I'm going to install it on Linux. So I'll click on Linux. And this command right here is a command we could use to set up the CrowdSec repository on our server. So we'll copy this. And then what we'll do is run this on our Linux server. And here on my terminal, I'll use SSH. Type in the IP address. And I'm logged in. Anyway, what I'll do is paste in the installation command here. And then I'll press enter. Now that we have the repository for CrowdSec on our server, we can install CrowdSec itself. And to do that, we simply run sudo apt install CrowdSec just like this. And when it comes to installing CrowdSec, that's all there is to it. To verify it, we can run systemctl, status, and then CrowdSec. And we see that it's active and running. Just want to check that. It should start automatically, but even if it doesn't, as you might already know from my systemd video, you can simply run systemctl start crowdsec if you need to start it, but in my case, it's already running. Anyway, what I'll do is switch back over to the crowdsec console. Here on the console, you can see that I have no servers registered right now, and that makes sense since I just set this up a few minutes ago, but what we need to do now is enroll our server into the console. So if you scroll down, you'll see the command that we need right here, so I'll copy that. And then back in the terminal, you guessed it, we'll paste in the command. And here it is. And if this is successful, we should have CrowdSec installed. So I'll press enter. And so far, so good. Let's go back to the console again. And check it out. Here's the server. So at this point, what we need to do is accept the enrollment. We could do that by clicking this button right here, which should finalize the process. And if you scroll down, you'll see your server. So right now it's still refreshing itself. I've just installed it after all, but as you can see, CrowdSec is installed. Anyway, what I'll do is click on it. And when we click on it, we can see even more information. Now I mentioned earlier that we'll also need a remediation component and an easy one to install is the firewall bouncer. What that'll do is add firewall rules for any IP addresses that CrowdSec detects as malicious. To set that up, what we'll do is run sudo apt install crowdsec hyphen firewall hyphen bouncer hyphen IP tables. There's also one for NF tables as well if you're using that. But I'll install this one right here in the case of Debian. I'll press enter again. And that should be all there is to it. To make sure that it works, we'll type systemctl status and then crowdsec hyphen firewall, hyphen bouncer. We can see that it's active and running. If for some reason it's not, you could change status to start. But as you can see, on my end, it's good to go. So at this point, we've installed CrowdSec and now we have a remediation component as well. Back here on the console, we can see my system right here. And right here, we can see that we have one remediation component. So I'll click on that. And as you can see, the firewall bouncer is listed right here. And that means we've successfully set up CrowdSec on our Linux server. 
Now, let's see what the process looks like on PFSense. Now we arrive at the main attraction for today's video, CrowdSec's new PFSense plugin. And its presence means that PFSense users can now take advantage of CrowdSec's threat intelligence with their preferred firewall solution. PFSense itself is extensible. It contains a built-in package manager you could use to download additional features, with one example being UPS plugins for power management, among many other things. And the way this generally works is you go up here to the system menu. Once there, you'll find package manager. And that'll bring you to the screen that you see right here. We have two tabs on this screen, installed packages and available packages. So installed packages just shows me what I've actually installed on my end. So if you're curious about some of the plugins that I use, well, here you go. But what we want to do is click on available packages right here because that's where you go to download a new package. Now, at the time of recording, CrowdSec is not listed here. So if you scroll down, as you can see, it's not listed. The reason why it's not listed here is because CrowdSec is currently in the process of getting the plugin approved for PFSense. It's possible by the time you're seeing this video, it might be listed here. And if it is listed here, this is the preferred way to install it. So if you want to install a package, for example, I'll just install something else just so you can see what the process looks like. How about Tailscale? So I'll click on that, I'll install it. I'll confirm. And now that's done. So back here on the Installed Packages tab, if I scroll down, I should see that Tailscale or whatever plugin I went to install is listed here. And it is. Now, again, as you can see, CrowdSec is not listed here, at least not yet. So at this point, we will need to follow a manual process to get this installed. Just please keep in mind that whenever CrowdSec does get approved and it is on this list, you should install it from here instead of the manual procedure. With PFSense, you only install plugins manually if that's the only way to go. In the future, it should be listed here, but for right now, what we'll do is go over to the documentation page and I'll have a link to this article right here on the screen, as well as in the description below. But what we have right here is the documentation page for the PFSense plugin. It goes over the type of installations. We have small, medium, and large, and then it tells you the differences between each. But more importantly for us right now, we have a section here that goes over the process of installing the package manually. So just like it says, what we're going to do is click right here to find a release to install. And this should bring you to the GitHub page for the project. As of the time of recording, version 1.6.2 is the latest. So what we'll do is just scroll down here. We'll expand assets. And here we have a list of assets. So what we'll do is just right click on the first one. We'll copy the link. And the order that we're installing these in is very important, by the way. At this point, we'll leave that page open and we'll switch to a terminal. What we want to do is SSH into PFSense, make sure that we have connectivity to it. So I'll just disconnect from the server that we set up earlier. What I want to do is SSH directly into my firewall. And I use a non-standard port. So basically you'll need SSH access to PFSense. I've already set that up off camera. I'll press enter. I'll say yes. And now, as you can see, I'm logged in. I'll type sudo in my case because I need root access to install a package. We're going to be installing a number of packages manually here. So I'll type sudo and then pkg add dash f and then the first file right here. So what I'll do is press enter. I'll type in my super secret password. Next, what we'll do is grab the re2 package. I'm going to copy the link address again. Then we'll type sudo pkg and then add dash f. Let's paste it in right here. I'll press enter. Anyway, the next one we'll install is this one here. So let's copy the link just like last time. And of course, I'll paste it in. And now we have that one installed. Now notice that it's giving us some commands we can use to go ahead and start the service. 
but you can ignore that because PFSense will take care of that for us. What we're going to do is just move on to the next command. So again, grab the next package. And this time we're going to grab CrowdSec itself. Let's grab that and paste it in. Just like last time, we'll ignore the start commands there. And then what we'll do is grab the PFSense plugin right here. Here's the actual plugin. So we'll copy this link right here. This should be the last one that we'll need. And we'll install it. And it looks like we're done. Now what we're going to do is go back to PFSense. And if everything went well, we should have CrowdSec listed right here inside PFSense. How cool is that? And as you can see, we have the plugin and all of its options right here. In the dashboard, what we'll do is go to Engines right here. We'll click Add Engine. And then we'll scroll down just like we did earlier. We're going to copy the Enroll command right here. And then we'll switch over to the terminal. The next thing we'll do is run this command right here on PFSense. This is going to register the central API. So I'll press enter. We'll paste in the command. I'll press enter. And check it out. It looks like the process is complete. Back on the console, when you go to the engines tab, you should see your firewall appliance right here listed waiting to be accepted for its enrollment. I'll go ahead and accept it right now. And now with all of that complete, we have PFSense here in my CrowdSec console and it's now being protected with Crowd Security. And there's our video. In this video, I showed you the new PFSense plugin for CrowdSec and I also showed you the new updated installation procedure as well. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click that like button to let YouTube know that you like this video and also subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux. In the meantime, though, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.